Hi everyone, it's Ashley. Thank you so much for clicking on my video today. Guys, I am back from my cruise and I am home alone today. So, you know, the first thing on my list was to get into my craft room as quick as possible to show you guys just a couple more things I want to get done as we head on into Valentine's Day. Let's just jump right into it. I think I have like four or five things but we're just going to really slowly kind of get through them and talk. And we actually have some things to catch up on. So let's do that. I'll go ahead and get this moved over and we will begin. Okay, so I'm going to start with this frame here. This is the frame that I've shown on my channel countless times at this point already. It has, I think, like something about getting married on it. I just cut a piece of cardstock to fit right inside of my frame. It just gives me a nice white background. I made one of these for Valentine's Day already, kind of January into Valentine's Day. I'll try to link the video, but that is the one that is hanging outside of my daughter's room, and I think it's super cute. I'm going to leave that one up, but I am going to make another one, I think, for our bedroom. So I got these little Valentine's decorations. These are from Hobby Lobby. They were $2.49, but all of their Valentine's things were 40% off. So I don't know, like $2 maybe. But I thought it would be super, super cute to just take a couple of these little cutouts and put them into the frame. So this is a nice way to just kind of get a little bit higher end of a look, right, without really having to do a lot of extra work. It just gives you extra dimension there. So I thought that was really cute. Now, I am definitely gonna go with either the Sweet or the XOXO just because my frame is white and then I have the white cardstock. These are like a natural wood color, so you could absolutely paint them, but I am in no mood to be painting today. So for this, I think that these are just gonna get a little washed out. Now, the Sweet and the XOXO are painted in a really, really pale pink, which for me is perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these other sentiments away. I'm sure I will probably be using just at least a couple of these more this season. But for now, I think I'm going to go with the two XOXOs. Which, when I saw this packaging in Hobby Lobby, I thought it was like all of this. I thought it was all XOs, XOs. And then that was my own fault. Once I got home, like I read it and it said there was like two of each sentiments, which is fine. The two XOs fit in here just perfectly. So with that being said, let's see how I kind of want this to sit. Okay, so I'm thinking just about something like that will be nice. I have my hot glue gun here. It's all about warmed up. So I'm gonna choose to lay this down with hot glue. You can lay this down with your preferred method. Honestly, like some art glitter glue or even like just, you know, some all purpose kind of like liquid glue, I think would work just fine. I have a couple projects here that I think I'm gonna use hot glue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. Although maybe not the best choice in this case. However, I think that I will be able to make it work. Okay, so hopefully that's pretty straight. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do our second one here. Now this, these are really light and they're going like on a piece of paper. So you definitely do not need a ton of stick, right? You don't need a ton of hot glue. So just a little, it goes a long way in this instance. Now I do have some hot glue strings and some kind of seeping out under a letter or two. So I'm just going to bring in my weeding tool here and just kind of get some of those little strings and then see if I can't remedy a little bit of this pooling that I got. Which this is why I say maybe hot glue wasn't the best adhesive choice. But learn from me and maybe use a liquid type of glue it might be a little better for this. Just bring in my tweezers here. I think that it will help me grab just a little bit better. 
Okay, so here's my little sign. I think that is so cute. And like I said, I also have like six sentiments left over. This is just a really, really easy, cheap way to give these little signs like just a little something extra, right? It's not just vinyl laid down. So this is like so super easy and quick and it just gives it so much of like it just gives it so much extra than just putting some vinyl on it. So I think that these are a great buy. And like I said, I put a piece of cardstock in here. So at the end, you know, I will just take the cardstock out and then reuse the frame as always. But there is our first little craft, and I think that is so cute. I'm sure the Dollar Tree also has a lot of wood cutouts like this. So I'll definitely check there first. Now, kind of in that same theme, I also had these wood hearts cutouts from Dollar Tree. They just came in this dark wood color. I gave them a coat of pink paint, and then I also went around the sides, and I just painted those white just so they would kind of blend into my background just a little better here. The sides of them were like really, really dark. So to me, it just kind of stood out a little much for my taste. So just to kind of bring that in, I just painted the outside with just a little bit of white chalk paint. Now I'm just going to go in with just a tiny, tiny bit of hot glue, just kind of seeing where I think it's going to make contact with the sign. These are super lightweight. So again, I'm not worried about getting a ton of adhesive down on here. It is going to hold up just fine. Once again, if you have a liquid type of glue, I would probably use that. Um, the only liquid glue I have is my art glitter glue, and my precision tip has been like, I don't know, I cannot get it to work, and I really need to just take it out of my craft room and clean it really good with like hot water, and I just keep forgetting to do so, but... So I don't really have anything else that I think would work better than hot glue. So I'm just going to kind of work with my hot glue here. It's doing a great job. It's just a little messy and I will have to go back in and kind of clean up my stringies here. here was just a little board from Dollar Tree. It just comes in like this bare wood. I just gave the front of it one quick coat of white chalk paint and this is just going to go on my entryway table into my home. I thought it would just be nice to kind of set towards the back and just kind of have it around some other Valentine's things and it's just a little piece of decor that it doesn't have words on it right so it just kind of is something pretty that your eye can look at without necessarily needing to read and I think that it will just kind of add to the overall Valentine's feel. So there's our second little craft, super cute. Okay, so bringing in my third little blank here, you guys have seen this picture frame one other time on my channel. I got this for $2.49 at Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance. It was a piece of table decor, originally $10. This did have a saying on it. I don't remember what it said. And then here it just has where it screws in and it is to hold a photo. And I'm actually, if you guys saw that video, I'm actually doing the same exact thing. I absolutely love the Mary and Bright one I made. And it sits on our entryway table into our home. The same place that little um, heart decoration I just made. The same place that's going to sit. And let me tell you, I still have the Mary and Bright one up. I take down my Christmas decor literally took it down like the day after Christmas. I was so tired of looking at it. I was just over it and I was ready to be done with Christmas. So let me tell you, I took everything down like literally the day after, but that frame is still up on my entryway table. It has a photo 
clip to it and I just love it. I absolutely love this dark green on that entryway table. With the things that I have there with it, it just goes so, so nicely. So I've kind of been like putting off taking it down until I could get into my craft room and kind of make a replacement frame for it because I don't want to take down the family photo I have in there. Today is that day. I'm going to go ahead and get that switched out. Now I am doing literally the same exact thing, the same color, I'm pretty sure even. Um, because like I said, I really like that dark green with everything else I have on that table. It really just gives it a nice like contrast and I don't know I'm really liking this dark green in my home it's kind of grounding my home for me and I don't know right now just the season that I'm in I'm really really enjoying that so with that being said I chose the same exact color but I just went with something that I can keep up in my home year round this is definitely suitable for Valentine's Day but this is also something that I plan to keep up for as long as I like until I get tired of it and I'm ready to kind of switch it out. I love the picture that I have in that frame. So like I said, I did not want to take it down until I had a new frame for it. So I'm glad to be getting this done today. So, oh my goodness, guys, I got back from my cruise yesterday. We had the best time. It was so relaxing. My husband and I just had truly such a great time and I am so, so thankful for the time we got to share together. But I have to tell you guys a funny story. In my last video, you saw that I had my nails done and I told you like I ordered these press-ons from Amazon and they went on so nicely and I thought they were so cute. I was so proud of myself. I thought I did such a good job, which, you know, I did for my first time. Like they were fine. Um, but they were really long, right? So I had them on for about three days. And at that point, I really knew like they were too long for me. I wasn't going to be able to really enjoy my cruise and like without worrying about them, right? They were just, they were too long. It wasn't going to work for me. So I decided before, you know, we go on the cruise, before we leave, I was going to risk it and like just file them down and cut them and see what happened. Because I figured, you know, like the worst case scenario, like I ruin them and I just take them off and it is what it is. So I actually like, I trimmed them, filed them down and they looked great and they were like the perfect length and they looked so cute and I was so happy. So I did that, we go. They were perfect. Oh my goodness. So they lasted like, you know, that whole day. The next day we get up, I pack because I am a last minute packer, which that is a whole nother story in itself. But I am a last minute packer. So I got up that morning, like packed our bags, did everything we needed to do. And, you know, we go get on the boat, you know. However much time from the time you get on the boat until your room is ready. So like, you know, this whole few hours we're on the boat and we're having a great time. And my nails look so good. I'm so happy. Literally, as soon as we get to our room and I like just sit down and like relax for the first time. I go to like reach my bag and all of a sudden like two of my nails pop off on my right hand. So I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, of course, you know, I brought everything with me. So I was like, okay, well, you know, not ideal, but not the end of the world. So, you know, I'm thinking I'm not going to do it right the second. Well, long story short, let me just tell you, within 10 minutes, my whole right hand had popped off and I was so over it. I absolutely did not want to put them back on. I was just in vacation mode, I did not want to be worried about it and I was over it at that point. So, of course, I think, you know, that's fine. I will just go ahead and pop off the rest of them. No problem. They all came off super easy. So, I go to do my left hand and two of them came off super easy. Unfortunately, these two and my thumb, I have not been able to get off yet. So, literally for probably like the first like two hours on our cruise 
I was walking around with this hand completely done like this and then this hand with nothing. So finally, I decided to kind of start to try to get these off. And like I said, I got these two off. These three are hanging on literally like for dear life. So these three little nails were with me for the cruise. The rest of them did not make it past the first day. So I will tell you a little bit of a lesson learned there, right? Probably like don't try to do press-ons for the first time right before you're leaving for a cruise, but it was just so funny because I had like worn these nails for like days before, even like super long, you know? I'm going to set this to the side. I kind of did a really quick peek and it looks like I have all of my dots. However, I'm just gonna put this right here. I'm not gonna throw it away just yet because as I go through, I want to just double check that I really do have all of the dots. Now I will tell you, I went with the font that I really liked. Like I said, I am planning for this to be a really permanent piece in my home. So I am willing to put in the time and effort right now for this to really look how I like. So this is gonna be a lot of weeding. I honestly will probably kind of speed us through it. However, I'm just gonna go through and grab all of my middles. I am going to make sure I have all of my dots or as many of them as I can save, I will. And I think that I will probably finish up my story once I'm done with this.
Okay, so just finishing up the last couple of lines here, I did turn on my Easy Press Mini to Medium, which is the two wavy lines. Now, I will tell you, this design is tedious for sure. I wouldn't say difficult, just tedious, right? There's just a lot of little pieces. I included a period and I also included a lowercase i, which then has a dot to the i. You absolutely could pick a font, a design, a saying, however you'd like to do it. And you could definitely make it a lot less difficult and a lot less tedious than I made mine. You know, if you just even did like an uppercase I instead of a lowercase I, you wouldn't have that dot, right? Or and don't include the period and then that's one less thing to worry about. I, however, I like a certain look. And like I said, because this is something that I plan to kind of keep in my home, I think for quite a while, um, and I really like the way where it's sitting now and kind of how it's looking in that area. So I'm willing right now to kind of take the time to really get this to look exactly how I like. And I prefer to go with a certain type of font and it just works for me and it's what I find appealing. Again, with that being said, absolutely you can run with this however you like i will tell you just kind of giving this a quick once over i did lose my period right here which it looks like that's the only one that i'm kind of missing that i can tell right now at least i have some little scraps here i can see if i can kind of find it or find one that is similar in shape and size. I also could go back to my little piece here and just kind of see where it would be and look and see if I did, and there it is right here. Yep, so I just didn't weed it out. So it is a good thing that I kept this. I will be completely honest with you. If I looked here and I didn't see it, I couldn't find it, one little missing period would not make or break this project for me. Honestly, I think like only losing this one little period, if that's all I had lost for this whole project, I would have been absolutely happy with that. But, Because I did save this, I was easily able to go back in, see if I didn't weed it, and replace it. So that is great. Let's go ahead and clean up all of our little scraps here because I want to be really, really careful with those that they don't end up back on my project. I'm going to very quickly, well, maybe not quickly. Let's see. I'm going to slow down actually here and go through and really just kind of look at this make sure that I did in fact weed anything that I don't want there. At this point, you know, if there's any missing eyes or periods, that is just what it is at this point. I am not going to worry about it. I just want to make sure that all of my insides of my letters are weeded. And it looks like I did a pretty good job. Now bringing in my blank, I'm going to simply just kind of start by laying this down. I did size this for my blank. However, I did make it just a little bit wider. That way I could have it kind of falling off of the edges. And to me, that just gives it a more finished look. However, I do know that my top line is perfectly sized. And for me, that's a great way to kind of make sure that it is lining up the way that I just kind of designed it, right? Because the way that I have it in design space looks good to my eye. So I do want to as closely get that translated onto my blank as I can. So really lining up that first line exactly how you like it will essentially kind of give you a guide, right? And then the rest of your design, if you get that first line down, really should just kind of fall into place. Now I'm going to come in with my Easy Press Mini. Like I said, I have it set to medium. I'm simply going to bring this in. I'm going to start at the top and just kind of apply my heat press. You will definitely, definitely be able to tell as this starts to lay down. Just really monitor what's in front of you. Monitor the blank that you're working on. 
but I am also going to kind of keep this moving. I don't want to leave it in one space for too long. The mini is made to be moved around. Like I said, I do have some areas where the iron-on is going to come off of my design. That is just fine. Wherever it makes contact, it will lay down, right? You'll get that on nicely. And wherever it doesn't, we're just going to go in with our true control knife and I will cut off those areas. Okay, so I think that's doing pretty good. I am going to give this just a moment to kind of cool down. So with that being said, I'm going to bring in my cutting mat from the Dollar Tree. It's a really good size for just quick little things like this. I'm going to bring in my true control knife and just simply cut this away. And then... I don't think I have, nope, so this side kind of just lines up just perfectly, so I don't have anything to cut on that side. Let's kind of start to peel this back and see. Okay, so I'm going to give this a little more heat right in here. This is like right next to where the screw screws in for the little clip, so it's hard to get like really nice flat press right here, but... It is going to be just fine. And that's why the mini is really, really nice, though, because you're able to just give really, really focused heat, which is super helpful, especially for projects like this. So I'm just going to go through really slowly. I'm going to really, really monitor and make sure that this is laying down. You want to really, at this point, take your time. Do not start to rush now because this is a point where you could really lose the project. So just really slow down. It's worth it to take a little extra time at this point. Okay, so here's my little frame, and as you can see, I just put I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you all over it, and so cute. Like I said, I am really loving this dark green. I mean, I'm sure to you guys it just looks black, but it is a really, really dark green. So here is how my little frame came out and I just have it setting up just like this on my desk. I love this so much. I don't have a four by six photo handy, but it just kind of will set like this on my desk with our picture in it. And I think that this is so beautiful. I love it. The one that says Merry and Bright is definitely getting packed up. I will bring that out next Christmas. But in the meantime, I think that this one is a great replacement and I am so happy to have this. Okay, so just kind of sticking with iron on here since I have my heat press warmed up. I just have this table runner here. I like to put a table runner on our dining room table. This one I got last year at Target. Now this is like the end, it's just pink. It has white stripes and then like throughout the table runner itself, it has the red hearts. Now I displayed this just as it is last year. And when I pulled out my Valentine's Day things for this year, I thought that it would be a great idea to just go in and add just a little bit of iron onto this. And honestly, this is one of my favorite things to do. Just because for me, I try not to go out and buy like, all new decor you know every year so there are certain things that i find that i you know either maybe spend a little more on or i just really really love that i pack up but you know the next year maybe it's like okay i can do something a little different to it right and then it's like having a brand new piece of 
decor and I absolutely love that. So for this, since I'm kind of going with the XOXO theme this year, I'm just really feeling it. I am loving it. So I thought it would be really, really pretty to just go in with some red glitter iron-on. I just cut out this sweet XOXO design from Design Space. And with my mini still on medium heat, I'm just going to go through and iron this down very quickly. This is a super, super quick design. You know, this is already super cute. And like I said, I displayed this just as it is in my home last year and I loved it. But then like, you know, taking it out of the box this year, I thought, well, let's just change it up a little, right? And I love that because I am able to repurpose it. And for me, it's, you know, I get to create. This way of crafting has really just worked out for me. So taking that off of my heat press mat, I'm just going to give this just a moment to kind of cool down. Glitter iron on, in my experience, does best when it is a cold peel. Oh my goodness. And let me tell you, I love glitter iron on because you literally cannot get the full effect until you rip that liner off and see just how pretty it really is. My lighting, I'm sorry guys, is not the best I know, but let me just tell you in person, this is like, oh my goodness. It is so glittery and so pretty. I absolutely love that. This will just hang like kind of off of my dining room table. And I think that is so cute. You know, and just with a piece of scrap iron on, I got myself a new piece of table decor. And, you know, for me, it was practically free, right? All right, guys, let's move on to our next craft. Okay, so this one's not really a craft, but I do want to show you guys. So I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was $5.49, but it was 40% off. So this is what I'm going to be using for my wreath on my home. Now, I was thinking about painting this, but I will tell you guys, I have a dark blue door. So for my door, personally, I got really lucky because like the natural wood beads or like white looks really good against my door because it is so dark so with that being said i do not think that i am going to um paint it or stain it or do anything like that to it it is a really really big size um, it's just in a natural bead, and then it has this twine hanger. I also have this velvet ribbon. It was one yard from the Dollar Tree, so this was $1.25. And I am just a sucker for velvet. I just think it's so pretty, so... I'm going to make a bow. Now, this is definitely a lot less ribbon than I was expecting. I feel like it's even less than like what I normally get. So I don't know. I don't know the best way to go about making this ribbon. Now, oh my gosh, I always forget. There's one where you do like, oh my goodness, I have to think. It's like a ribbon like this. Let's move this out of the way for a second. I'm going to kind of, we're going to talk ourselves through this. So I know there's one where it's like you make a ribbon like this, right? And then you kind of open this up and then you pinch. Okay, yes, I think that this might work. Okay, yeah, that's gonna work, I think, pretty good for this. Now, the only thing is, I wasn't really prepared, so I don't have any twine. So let's do this, I'm going to, okay, so let's kind of start over. I did go ahead and cut a piece of twine. So I think I'm gonna go about like this, okay. And then I'm going to turn this towards me. And then I just kind of started to scrunch this together. Now, I think that my loops, no, I think they're good, actually. So let's go with that. Where did my twine just go? I just had it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I'm going to, let's wrap this round a couple of times. And then I'm going to bring it to the back. And I'm going to try to tie this before it just kind of explodes on me. Okay, and I'm going to tie that really tight in the middle because I think that's best. I don't know. I'm I'm winging it here, but 
Oh my gosh, that came out really cute, actually. I like it. Okay, now the only thing is, is I was kind of thinking that. I think that my bows are a little, like my these are a little big, but I don't know. I think it's fine. Honestly, I think it's fine, especially for me because, let me tell you, I am not a bow maker. So for me, this is actually like way better than I was even expecting this to come out. So for me, I'm super happy with this bow. I know that there are people that can make a way better bow, but for me, I think that that is going to work just fine. I am going to dovetail the ends just because, you know, I am a fancy lady. So am I doing it right? I always kind of mess this up here. I always forget which way to cut. Is it this way? Oh my gosh, hold on, I'm confusing myself. Yeah, okay, it's this way. Oh my gosh, I always confuse myself. Okay, so I don't know what you guys are going to see or not see of that, but let me just tell you, me and this bow absolutely had the fight of our life. I am just about ready to throw it in the trash, so I'm going to leave it exactly how it is. Next time I am at the Dollar Tree, I will probably be on the lookout for a little bow for this because let me tell you, I just am not a bow maker and this bow just about got the best of me but i was thinking about doing something like this for my door hanger now this bow is really light and i wanted to keep it as light as possible because i don't want this to hang lopsided but i did want to put my bow kind of off to the side i didn't want it right at the top or bottom if i find that it is leaning too much and it looks weird i will move this kind of to the top probably on the hanger itself but i thought it was really cute kind of down at the side and i think that this is going to be so so pretty against my dark blue front door so i just wanted to show you guys this and do what was supposed to be a super quick craft of just tying a little bow on it i should have known better because me and bows are not on the best terms however i got through it and here is my front door hanger for valentine's day I have this little picture frame that I found at Dollar Tree. It is a stand-up picture frame. When I saw this though, I thought that this would be really, really cute to make into a magnet for the refrigerator. So now that is my idea. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I don't know how successful this will be. I have not done it yet. However, I honestly don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I have the little frame here. I also cut out a piece of vinyl that I want to put onto it. And then I also have a set of magnets that I will show you also from the Dollar Tree. And I was thinking that I will just hot glue some magnets to the back of this. And I could put this on our refrigerator as a little way to display 
a picture from our cruise. So since that had the little hanger on it, for me, I just thought the easiest way would probably just go in with my true control knife and just cut around it. So that's what I chose to do. You can absolutely approach that in any way you see fit. I have absolutely just the tiniest little piece of um, vinyl here. And I thought it would just be super cute just to type out anniversary 2024. And like I said, I want to put a little picture from our cruise in here and just display it on the refrigerator. But it's like, you know, I can't just put it on there. I thought it would be nice to like have a little frame for it. And I was thinking, I think I was talking to my husband when we were on the boat and it was like, you know, I, I think that I'm type A, right? And I really, really, I identify the, with that, but truthfully and in my heart, I know like I am definitely like a type B girly that identifies as type A, right? Like I want to be type A super bad and like I try and I try to be super organized and like on top of everything, but I'm definitely more of a type B girl. I just kind of go with the flow. Like I was saying before, I packed my suitcase for the cruise um, the morning that we left. And let me tell you, I did not do a good job packing. I forgot quite a few things that I wanted to take. So I might have kind of learned my lesson in that sense, but probably not. But we had a great time. I was so relaxed. It was so nice to kind of get away. But we were also definitely ready to get home to our daughter. So vacation was amazing. However, we are kind of glad to also be back and kind of get back into our routine of things. And I have like a question for you guys because my husband and I kind of got into a little debate about this and I'm honestly really curious. So let me know like down in the comments, do you guys watch your videos on YouTube in like normal speed or do you watch it in two times speed? And I will tell you, I watch just about everything in two times speed. There is really only one creator that I watch that he speaks a little too quickly for me to watch him in two speed. However, 98% of videos that I watch on YouTube, I watch in two times speed. And I don't, I thought that everybody did, honestly. And my husband like caught me watching a video and I was watching it at two times speed and he was like, He was like terrified. He was horrified that I was watching this. And I'm like, I watch literally absolutely everything in two times speed. And he honestly could not believe it. And I couldn't believe that he thought it was weird because I thought everybody watched everything in two times speed. But you guys let me know down below because I really am curious. He was like, oh my goodness. He thought I was like an alien. Okay, so I just really, really quickly went in and typed out anniversary 2024. Oh, and it looks like my frame is a little scratched there at the bottom, but no problem. I just did that in a white adhesive vinyl and it's super cute. I love the way that came out. Now on the back, I did remove the stand, as you remember. I'm gonna bring in my hot glue gun as well as these magnetic buttons. They are a 12 piece from the Dollar Tree. So this package was $1.25. And I appreciate it that it comes on a little metal disc. So they're actually really easy to work with. I just kind of take them and then I'm just gonna apply some hot glue to one side. And then I'm thinking about where this is going to like make contact. So I actually think I'm going to put it like on the four corners in the plastic part. Now, I'm not sure since I'm doing it that way, I'm not 100% sure if I needed to remove that frame at all. The stands, I don't know if there would be enough, be enough space with the magnets that it wouldn't matter. I'm not sure. I just went ahead and did it because I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to attach these. 
but you might want to test that first because you might not even need to remove that, right? Okay, so here is my little frame. It just came out so, so cute. And like I said, I just think it's going to be so cute to just put our little picture on there of us in front of the boat. And then I think that the four magnets will be more than enough. It's a very light frame. It's just plastic. However, if I do see that it does need more support, I will just go in and add. I can probably add even three more if I need to up top but I think that will be completely overkill. I think that this will be just fine. You can easily personalize this, you know, by putting someone's initials or like their anniversary date. I probably would find an alternative for the backing, but really for this, you could even take a piece of cardstock and just cut it down to the same size as your photo and just put a piece of cardstock here would even be prettier than this. Because it is me and my home, this is absolutely acceptable to me. Like I said, I am a type B girly, so I do have a couple more crafts that I plan to get done today, but I don't think that I'm going to have enough time. So let's go ahead and bring in everything we did get done and see what we did. Okay guys, here's everything we got done for this video. I am so happy with how everything came out. Um, this was definitely kind of just more little things that I will set around the house. I am super excited for my dare hanger. I think that this came out so cute. Like I said, I may choose another bow just because we're not gonna talk about it. However, I will say that this is absolutely my favorite piece that I made today. I love this. I am so excited to switch out the one for Christmas with this one and add our family photo. It is one of my favorites. So I love having this. I will love having this up for months to come. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate everyone that is here. If it's your first time, I hope that you consider subscribing. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and seeing what else is on my craft table. Guys, I hope to have another video for you very, very soon, and I will see you then. Bye!